Are you already shocked by the final price for the Cybertruck? For those who do not know, let us explain that. With promises of a price starting from 40 grand for a base model on a delivery day, Tesla set the lower limit at 60 grand. It's an unpleasant change, but the car needs to be released, Elon Musk decided. And on November 30, Tesla finally presented its long-awaited Cybertruck at a Gigafactory, Texas. This location of the delivery event was chosen for a reason. An electric pickup truck is truly the best choice for these hot prairies. But what about driving in cold conditions? How will Cybertruck behave in snow drifts and on slippery ice? As it has become known, the Cybertruck is equipped with a proprietary Tesla heat pump system. This system is designed to combat the main problem of electric vehicles in the cold, decreasing battery efficiency and, accordingly, a very short range. The operation of the heat pump is based on several entropy sources and sinks available to it depending on the circumstances, including the ambient air, the cabin air, the battery, the electronics, and the motors. These are all connected through a device called an octovalve, which creates something like six distinct heat exchange loops which can be combined or isolated to cool or heat different parts of the vehicle separately. This system, of course, runs on electricity and also loads the battery, but based on calculations, it is four to six times more efficient than driving without this system. Although the technology is not new, the same pumps are used, for example, by Rivian, but it is an obvious advantage for a Cybertruck compared to, for example, the Ford F-150 Lightning, which does not have such a system. Charging. The Cyber Cybertruck charging speed is 250 kilowatts, which allows you to charge from 0 to 90% in 40 minutes in summer. Although they are not entirely adapted for charging such gigantic cars, and you may have a problem with cable length. But another negative effect of cold is that charging speeds from public fast chargers may slow down. Tesla acknowledges that extreme weathers can slow down charging speed at its supercharger stations, and the same is likely true for other networks. So, unlike pure city cars like the Model 3 or Model S, for Cybertrucks, it's really better to have a charger at home. Not only because it would be possible to charge the car in a warm place, but also because, if possible, it's always worth pre-warming the interior of an electric vehicle while your car is still plugged in. This way, you use electricity to warm up the car rather than reducing your range by using the battery once you're off the road. Connecting to the network more often than usual can also relieve you of range anxiety. Also, on the road, use the heated seats and steering wheel as they consume much less energy than a fan or air conditioner. If you can bear it, turning off the heater can significantly increase your projected range. It's worth remembering that petrol and diesel cars are also not immune to reduced efficiency in cold weather, and this is not only caused by the increased need to heat the cabin. Many modern internal combustion engine systems need to reach the correct temperature before they can operate at peak efficiency. When cold, this process will take longer. However, the difference between warm weather and cold weather efficiency tend to be less pronounced than with an EV. But it's not just the Cybertruck's range that becomes a problem in the winter. There is another aspect. Weight. Indeed, all electric vehicles tend to be heavier than their equivalent petrol and diesel models, but the Cybertruck's weight is a record-breaking 3.3 tons. And on frozen, slippery roads, this can be a problem. After all, it's nice to accelerate to 60 miles in 3 seconds, but another thing is to stop after that. For comparison, the weight of the previously mentioned petrol Ford F-150 is only 2 tons, so the Cybertruck driver will have to rely on Tesla's safety systems on the snowy highway. Any handling deficiencies can of course be mitigated somewhat by investing in a good set of winter tires, which is just as important for an electric car as it is for a petrol car. But surely, a Cybertruck should have amazing off-road capability. For many decades, the best engineers of Audi, Toyota, Subaru, and other manufacturers have been developing mechanical systems for distributing torque over all four wheels so that the car has the best speed and cross-country ability on off-road terrain. But all of this work became useless with the advent of electric vehicles. Now the Tesla Cybertruck with its three electric motors can almost spin each wheel separately from the others. This still gives complete freedom of action with the software for simply amazing maneuverability and all this breaking off because Tesla does not recommend messing around with diagonal hanging in its guidelines. Lines. What we saw from previous Tesla SUVs, like Model Y and Model X, they showed really good off-road performance. But what about Cybertruck? A Cybertruck can do that. Perhaps due to the crude firmware, or due to Tesla's first experience in building a full-fledged off-road pickup truck, it has problems driving up a hill with a simple, hard, dirt surface. 
So what to do in winter if you have already bought a Cybertruck? Besides what has already been said, slow down. This may seem obvious, but the faster you drive, the less efficient and dangerous your car will be. Even reducing your speed from 70 to 65 miles per hour on the highway can have a significant impact on your range and safety. Driving carefully and using the car's software settings can also help, especially when you're driving a 3-ton truck. And please, don't try to go off-road yet. Tesla says that it is continuing to refine the Cybertruck and in our opinion, it's simply suicidal to drive it into the snowdrifts right now.